This is Jim and welcome to the fourth quarter where we talk about photography, video, and even a little bit of business. Today we are going to talk about Baylands, a beautiful place at the southern tip of the San Francisco Bay and bird photography, including some quick bird photography tips. We'll start with an overview of Baylands. Baylands is like a little oasis of near wilderness right next to the big city. Imagine being able to go from this to this in under 10 minutes. There are multiple ways to get here with interests in Palo Alto and Mountain View. Baylands is a great place to photograph birds. You can find many different bird species, and here are a few examples. Baylands is sprawling. It's a great place to get some exercise. You can walk, ride, or bike for hours. If you want to walk your dog, they are welcome on most of the trails. Check out some of the clips of many of the places you can go in Baylands. This is a long clip, around six minutes, that shows many areas of Baylands along with some clips of some of the birds. This video also has a lot of unedited audio allowing you to hear the birds squawking. This long clip is meant to give you a great idea of what you can expect when you visit. If you want to skip ahead to the rest of the video, go to roughly 8 minutes and 17 seconds. this bridge is a long hike, but it's really cool because sometimes you'll get an opportunity to see out of these pools, cormorants. It's a really great scene when they're sitting on the pole sunning themselves.
So you've decided to go to Baylands to photograph birds. Now what? We'll answer some questions like what's the best time to go? What kind of camera equipment should you bring? And what can you do to get better photos? Generally, you should go in the morning or evening. The light is better at those times. Given a choice, I would prefer going in the morning because most of the bird species are out feeding or gathering food for their young early in the morning. So what kind of camera should I bring? I would bring a mirrorless or DSLR camera with a long telephoto or long prime lens. Bringing a monopod or tripod will help get steadier shots and deal with the heavy weight of these big lenses. If you don't have equipment like this, bring what you have and practice getting closer, one of our key tips. Tip number one, get closer. In my opinion, this is the number one piece of advice to help improve your bird photography. Getting closer gives you so many advantages. You can fill the frame with your subject, creating greater impact in your photo. You can capture more detail from the beautiful bird feathers. You have less to worry about from atmospheric conditions like heat waves. Finally, if you can get really close, you can use a shorter, lighter lens and a smaller camera, maybe even a smartphone. Tip number two, get lower. I am frequently on my knees, crouched over, or even on my stomach if conditions allow. Getting lower allows you to take the photo from the perspective of the subject. If you are at their eye level, the photo feels more intimate. When you're lower, it's also easier to blur out the background and foreground, 
creating greater focus on the subject. If you can get just below the level of the subject, you can make the subject appear larger than life. This is sometimes called the hero perspective. Tip number three, add context. That means composing the photograph that puts your subject inside a scene. If you are photographing near the water, try to get the shoreline. If the bird is flying, see if you can get something besides the sky in the background. Tip number four, look for interesting behavior or scenes. For example, a bird catching a fish, a bird flying off with its catch, a bird splashing down in the water, or a bird ruffling its feathers. If you are photographing multiple birds, look for interesting patterns. Tip number five, raise your shutter speed, especially when you get closer or the subject is moving quickly. Don't follow the typical recommendations you hear on the internet about shutter speeds needed to capture sharp images. These shutter speeds are almost always too slow. Here's one you always hear that for sharp images, use the reciprocal rule that says your shutter speed should be two times the focal length of the lens. So if you are using a 500 millimeter lens, shoot at at least one 1,000th shutter speed to get a sharp image. This is just a starting point and it might be fine for static bird photos. This rule doesn't really take into account how the subject is moving or how close you are to the subject. I almost always suggest a faster speed. It really depends on the action of the subject. Is it flying? Is it a small bird that flies very quickly or hops around very fast? How close are you to the subject? In general, I start at around 1 1 hundred shutter speed for a 500 millimeter focal length unless the subject is sitting, sitting still and even then I might be higher. I often find myself at much higher shutter speeds if the subject is moving or any of the other factors are in play. This is a complicated issue and depends on so many variables but if you have any doubt at all, raise your shutter speed. This is a bonus tip regarding shutter speed. When you raise your shutter speed, you let in less light. That means in low light conditions, you will need to shoot at wider apertures and probably raise your ISO. Unfortunately, raising your ISO can add noticeable noise to the image making it look muddy. Fortunately, you can fix much of this in post-processing. Consider getting dedicated software designed to reduce noise. I highly recommend Topaz Denoise for this purpose. Here is a short demo of Topaz Denoise. Notice the image is a bit noisy with an ISO of 6400. So, we'll fix this easily in denoise. Denoise can show you a before and after view. Notice the huge improvement in the quality of the image. After you are happy with any of the adjustments, hit the apply button to save your changes.
Note that I am not sponsored by Topaz and I purchased Topaz Denoise with my own money. So, if you are ever in the San Francisco Bay Area or San Jose and you want to get out and photograph birds, Baylands is a great place. Remember the simple tips and you will get even better results. If you just want to get away from the city and hike, run, or bike, this is also a great place. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, hit the like button. To be reminded of future content, please subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.